We continue our marathon of UFC cards with UFC Fight Night South Dakota. McDonald versus Lineker. This is supposed to be uh, Michael Chiesa versus Tony Ferguson. That fault hit fight has fallen through. Ferguson's still on the card. Chiesa hurt. Undercard, going really quick because I'm in a bit of a rush. I'm taking Alex Nicholson by TKO. Taking Ronnie Yaya by decision. Taking Scott Holtzman by decision. Taking Christina Stansu by TKO. Taking Sam Alvey by TKO and taking Lauren Murphy by decision. Main car. Luis Smolka versus Ben uh, Gwynn. Um, both are really good flyweights. Uh, I want to say they're coming on a decent winning streak. Smolka, yeah, three in a row. Patty Holohan, Neil Siri, Richard Vac Richie Vaculik. Uh, ben Gwynn uh, has, of course, won both of his UFC fights against Al Tekken, Ol Skilk, and Ryan Benoit. Uh, Smolka is a far better fighter than either of those guys. Um, frankly, in any way you want to slice it. And S Smoka has beaten guys that I would argue are potentially better than Ben Gwynn. So I'm going with Smoka by decision because I don't see either of these guys finishing each other. It's flyweight. It's a weight class of decisions, but I think Smoka is a better athlete. I think he's just a little bit better in all the technical aspects as well. I think, like, I have a really big faith in Smoke to become something big. Not 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 champion big, because I look at the other guys kind of coming up around that kind of same early 20s um, prospect gap, and there are guys better than him. Um, I'm looking at Justin Scoggins. That's probably a future champion there. Uh, moving on, Kyle Noak versus Kata Nakamura. Kyle Noak uh, decision. Nakamura shouldn't physically be able to do anything with him. He does have the ability to pull off random submissions, so maybe he'll do that. But realistically speaking, you got to think Noke is the better grappler, although not the sneakier one, the better athlete, the bigger fighter, the better wrestler, which is weird to say with a Kyle Noke fight, and the better striker. So, yeah, Kyle Noke. Uh, Daniel Olmuzik, uh, the uh, Polish dude, I cannot say his name, versus Alexei Olenek. Hey, praise it! And my phone went off. Um, going with Alexei Olenek to win this fight probably by decision. He's, I think, the better grappler of the two. And he should be able to get Daniel to the ground. Uh, they both, I think, actually for heavyweights. Like, they aren't pretty at any point in their fight, but they, they have cardio for heavyweights. And, uh, it shouldn't be terrible. Tim Boach versus Jocelyn Man. Uh, I'm going with Jocelyn Man to win via decision. Uh, I just... Actually, you know what? Rephrase that. TKO. I just don't have any faith in Tim Boach at this point, really. I think the chin is gone, and his defense was never really all that strong. It was... It was a barbarian's defense, ironically, with his... with <laughs> Ironically, with his nickname. He was open. He was hittable. Um... It, what saved him was that he had a really good chin, a very solid wrestling background, and the fact that when you opened up on him, he had good counter games and powerful hands. I think the power in his hands is still there, but I think they're slowing down. I think the wrestling is starting to also atrophy in the sense that just his physical gifts are kind of going downhill. I mean, when you're when you're in there not making it, Dan, my God, someone really wants my attention. Uh, when you're in there not making Ed Herman and a 40-plus-year-old Dan Henderson looks slow. It's it's a problem. Um, he's slowing down. Saman is athletic and pretty talented in all areas. Not like dominant in any area. Um, now my only my only problem is is that Josh Saman's a guy who he's his odd fighting trait where he he feels the need to fight you everywhere, almost as if he has to prove uh, superiority everywhere. And in the clinch, Tim Boach is deadly. He is a very good, dirty boxer with a lot of really solid uppercuts. Um, and the knees are not bad either, actually, when he gets those going. And his wrestling is very solid. So if some man is content to play the clinch fighting game with Tim Boach, he may lose this fight. But if he keeps it at range, the deterioration of Boach's chin, the fact that he was never a very good defensive striker should lead to Saman being able to get the victory. Tony Ferguson versus uh, Landon Venata. Um, Tony Ferguson, TKO, maybe sub, I don't know. But it's your typical Tony Ferguson, how is he going to finish it? He's got the good striking. He's got the ability to finish you on the feet. 
And he's got that mean, 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 mean Darsh choke and a couple of other things, like in terms of choking, which is really good. Um, just while I'm at Ferguson, this is going to be a relatively short video. It has to be said that uh, the hypocrisy of Tony Ferguson is impressive with this one because he was really, really angry that Khabib Nurmagomedov, when he got hurt, when he was supposed to fight Nurmagomedov, um, wound up fighting uh, Daryl Horcher. And he accepted that fight. And Ferguson was right steamed about it. And here he is taking a fight with Landon Venata after Mike Chiesa gets hurt. Is that it's it's you could not write it. You could not write it. And Habib gave it to, gave it to him on Twitter. Uh fantastically. Um there's a lot of things with Habib right now. Like you get the Rafael dos Anjos thing, for example, where he was like, Habib doesn't deserve a title shot, blah blah blah. Despite the fact that he beat RDA on RDA's way to the cha championship and had done far more than Eddie Alvarez, for example, if we're being honest. Um, and then he goes and he loses to Eddie Alvarez, so <laughs> the problem is a mute one. I don't know. Things are coming up just karmatically in uh, Habib's favor right now. Um, final fight of the night, Michael McDonald, John Lineker, Bantamweight fight, just to be clear, because Lineker, of course, you know, for a long time, flyweight. Lineker has the advantage when it comes to like just a pure exchanging of the punches game. His boxing is crisp, uh, powerful, defensively reasonably sound, um, which really is uh, really does not go without saying in the UFC. Really, that's that's I, that's to me that's always been the massive difference um, when people talk about quit a kickboxer or a boxer, etc., whatever. It's it's that I find that professional strikers in kickboxing and boxing, for example, are just much, much, it's not the offense that's much better, it's their ability to have defense that is tremendously better. Um, but Lineker is not bad defensively, very dangerous on the feet. Uh, grappling is actually very good. I mean, he's a Brazilian and he has, you know, your typical strong grappling game from Brazil. There's not really a lot of weak grapplers from Brazil. Um, his wrestling is pretty solid as well. Michael McDonald, more diverse striker, more able to. I would classify him more as a kickboxer, whereas Lineker is just more a boxer. I think McDonald is hittable, which is a, a concern that Lineker could possibly knock him out. But I believe McDonald is bringing in a serious reach advantage into this. Yeah, I mean, Lineker's 5'3", McDonald's 5'8". That should facilitate something. Um, if this were before the Masanori Kanahara fight, I would have probably picked McDonald without any real hesitation. Um, because at that point, I was really, really, really expecting big things from him. Then he fought Kanahara, looked bad, got the submission. Um, I'm going to say he does get the win here, and I'm going to say it is by submission, because I think his ground game is the better of the two. I think he can imp improvise enough wrestling to get the fight to the ground and do some things. But if he gets clipped and knocked out, it also is not going to surprise me because that is how Lineker's fights tend to go. That being said, Lineker at Bantamweight is just too small to fight with like the big dogs in the division. And I think, realistically, Michael Mayday McDonald is still one of those big dogs. So, McDonald, submission. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, and I'll let you know if I get my brother to pay me the money that he bet on Anderson Silva. Um, just a quick UFC 200 thing. People are saying worst card ever and like horrible card, horrible card, whatever. I enjoyed it. Uh, don't get me wrong. It wasn't a great card. It wasn't fantastic. It didn't live up to the hype. And I think that's the problem right there is it? you got really hyped for it. But I th honestly, if you got really hyped for it, I'm not really sure what to tell you. None of those fights really went in a way that I didn't expect. Okay, I'm, uh, with the exception of Brock Lesnar Hunt, I thought, you know, Lesnar would get knocked the fuck out, and I thought uh, Tate would survive the Nunez early onslaught, but like when you come down to people like complaining about Cormier versus Silva, like, Silva's a very hard guy to finish on the ground, Cormier's gonna take him down, he's gonna be on top of him, he's not gonna be shaken from the top of him, and that's the fight, and that's the fight you should have expected. And Aldo, Edgar, kind of the same thing. Um, minus I expected some leg kicks. Anyways, that's the fight card from South Dakota. I believe it's the first fight card in South Dakota. Not a lot in terms of like highly impactful fights. The main event kind of fell apart. 
Um, but there's some good stuff here. I think that Smoka versus Win is a look at the future of the flyweight division. I think Stancy versus Casey on the undercard will be actually a very good fight. Um, there's not much else, I guess. McDonald Lineker is a good fight. Um, that's all. So enjoy.